Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Today we're talking about something which is Japanese and relatively affordable and that is Toki. Now Toki is Japanese for time um, and I find it slightly ironic that it's called time given how youthful this thing smells but I think this had a very particular purpose as a product and when Hibiki was becoming nigh on impossible to get even in a non-age stated form this kind of stepped into the realm to replace it a little bit as a easy drinking, summery, utilitarian product. You can drink it neat, excuse me, you can cocktail it, you can ice it, you can do whatever you want. One of the key ingredients to Hibiki is Yamazaki. This kind of falls away a little bit on the Yamazaki front and it is more Cheetah, which is Suntory's grain whiskey, and Hakshi, which used to be my favorite Japanese single malt until I just couldn't afford to buy it anymore specifically the 12 year old. But it's meant to be a greener, lighter, fresher style of Japanese whiskey, which is quite interesting because I find them all quite light and fresh anyway. Let's remove our little lid from the glass. I'll give you guys some analytics of this. A beautifully light color. Uh, it's 43%. One would assume it is not natural color and you would assume it is also chill filtered because it isn't leaving much of anything along the side of the glass, even as in terms of coating it. It is a blended whiskey, as stated, it contains single grain and single malt whiskies. But let's smell and taste and see what's going on with Toki. Yeah, it's, it's a very youthful, vibrant nose to it. Um, I'm a tequila fan, I'm a mezcal fan. It has elements of that to it. And I assume a majority of the maturation is coming from bourbon barrels. So it kind of backs up this soft butter, sweet caramel thing on the nose. Which is always what cheat has been about. Popcorn, maple syrup, butter, caramel. Hakshu is quite an interesting single malt in the sense that it's always provided elements of like apple and pear, kind of space id kind of highland -y but it's also given things like pine and um, basil and sage, some more kind of greener, savory notes. Which I'm getting a little bit on this, the basil in particular. I feel like I was quite harsh on the legs this thing left on the glass, but now it's leaving quite a nice coating on the glass. So I retract my previous statement because it is coating that glass quite nicely now. But to smell this, if you're an experienced whiskey drinker, it comes across as youthful. I quite enjoy that um, as someone who's a fan of bourbon and like younger, well, agave spirits as a whole. I do quite enjoy that. Um, but I could see why this may be slightly off-putting to people who are used to Yamazaki 12, Hakshu 12. But by all means, you know, this bottle is five times, four to five times more expensive than a bottle of Yamazaki 12. So, you know, give it context. There is nothing about this whiskey which is offensive. And some of you may already think, oh, well, this isn't for me. But there's also nothing about it which is bad either. Like Japanese whiskey for me, from a, from a Whiskey Wednesday perspective, and in my day job as a retailer, people are still discovering Japanese whiskey, and I find that conversation very interesting. Because, you know, 2013 was such a big year for Japanese whiskey, as was 2014 and 2015, and maybe arguably 2016. But well, that was a minimum of six years ago. But people are still discovering it. And I think this bottle, uh, you know, like 36 pounds I paid for this. Um, it kind of does the job if you've never tried a Japanese whiskey before. And when you come into any retailer and you look at the shelves and you think, I've heard about Yamazaki. I'd love to try a bottle of Yamazaki. And let's say they've only got the 12 in, which has a starting price of 150 pounds these days. You might go, oh, I didn't want to spend that much. Whereas we can go, well, blended whiskies are designed to be easy drinking. We reviewed Black Bull 12 last week, an incredible blended whiskey. 
this for me kind of sets you off into the idea of what Suntory products are about because Habiki is this beautifully flavoured, balanced, woody, fruity blend. And the newer batches of Habiki Harmony are genuinely very, very good. I had one bad batch a while ago. See my most recent Habiki review about that. I explain that a bit more. And I've not tried this for a number of years, but I really like Cheetah. I did enjoy Hakshu. And it's kind of hitting all those notes. So the, f the finish has like a nice spiciness to it. It's kind of peppery. It's almost like agave syrupy. You know, if you like tequila or mezcal, you will probably enjoy this product as a Japanese whiskey, which doesn't explode your wallet. And still bottled at 43% for below 40 pounds. Pretty good. Again, taste-wise, it comes across as youthful. It comes across as very bright. I would say it's more driven by that kind of sweet pepperiness that Cheetah has. You get this kind of balance in your mouth of like maple syrup, but also black pepper. I don't taste too much Hakshu, which I do see as a negative because Hakshu is this beautifully floral, slightly smoky whiskey, emphasis on the slightly. It doesn't really come across at all if I'm being as honest as I can be. But I assume the influence of whatever percentage of Hakshu is in this bottle is adding to the finish. Which for, again, a whiskey below £40 is relatively long. It's pleasant. It's not inoffensive. Sorry, it's not offensive in any way. But what I'm going to do to emphasise this a bit more is that they say it's a particularly good cocktail whiskey. I love a highball. That's the Japanese whiskey cocktail of all. So I've got my glass with some ice. My little swizzly straw. I'm going to throw that in there. And some of you may have already turned off at this point because you detest the idea of whiskey cocktails. I say to you, more the fool, because whiskey cocktails are incredible. And if you're spending below £40 a bottle, they can be genuinely exceptional things. Got some ginger beer here. Nothing fancy. Just a local supermarket. I'm not going to pour it down the straw or down the, uh, the side of that spoon because it's not that kind of review. Talk amongst yourselves. Cheers. Now I don't have... Um, my spirits measure with me, but I assume that was probably just over a double I poured into there, plus what was in that glass. And interestingly, the influence of the ginger ale has really made the flavour of Hakshu come out a little bit more. You're getting slightly more basil -y notes, some more herbaceous notes, a bit of sage running through there, some piney sort of things. Comes across as a bit woodier. That's a fantastic long drink. Uh, the day I'm recording this, it's dark outside, but it's still like 21 degrees in Manchester. So this is perfect. Um, and bar means I will, in the process of editing these videos as I film them, this will probably be the drink that, fire, that fuels me through it. But um, just as a separate note, if you are a fan of highballs or whiskey cocktails, put your favorite in the comments below. I'd be intrigued to know what you think. Um, this isn't a whiskey which is going to blow your mind. This just does a decent job for the money at which you can buy it for. And if you think about that £30 price tag, outside of offers and like club card deals, Johnny Walker Black Label is 30 quid. Jameson's RRP is 28 to £30. Pounds. This fits in there and it does, does something a little bit different. It's lighter, it's fresher. For some people it might not burn as much. And I think for that it does a very, very good job. So I'm going to give it a 7 I think it's a very nice whiskey. I don't think there's anything to complain about it with. And the box I bought it with came with this rather nice kind of branded Toki glass. Um, but yes, thank you all for watching. That's the Toki blended whiskey from Centauri. I'm giving it a seven out of 10 and I'll see you all next week. Cheers.